Greetings from Christian News. Okay. Let me start by saying that I really have been going out of my way to ignore Bishop Chickenfoot, better known as Chicken Lamore Whitehead. When he was a was he when he was attacked in church a month or two ago, robbed of over ninety thousand dollars in jewelry in church. I didn't report on it. I ignored it. I ignored his Gucci clothes that he wears to church. I ignored. I ignored all of this. I ignored the fact that the people who are members in his church are clearly out of their mind. For sitting under something like this. But I can't ignore him anymore. Because he's been arrested for choking out a woman in church. And it's all over the internet. So it's not like he can say it didn't happen, even though he is saying that he was doing it to protect his wife. But here he is. Now, first impression. This man is wearing a Gucci suit um, with his little pink eyeglasses. Just from a first impression, and look at this, these chairs, these very ornate chairs. Just as a first impression, is this somebody you would sit under as a pastor? Would you want this to, to preach to you? I wouldn't. He couldn't preach one word to me. There's nothing this man could say to me that I would want to hear. Based strictly on how he's dressed. Very inappropriate. And who do you think is buying these expensive Gucci suits? You guessed it. His congregation. So I tried to ignore this man. Now, last, now the New York Times reported on him after his robbery and said, and it's okay, I'm just gonna read a tiny bit. The police said Bishop Lamar Whitehead was robbed of a fortune in jewelry. The crime caught on camera, but the focus soon turned to him and his past run-ins with the law. So this is a man who has had run-ins with the law. I'm not going to read much of it, but inside his church in Brooklyn, seated in a chair that looked more like a throne, and dressed in a slim cut banana yellow suit by Gucci, Bishop Lamar Whitehead prepared to deliver the sermon. Now, again, who was going to sit under something like this? Listen, it had been seven days since the obscure little, little congregation, Leaders of Tomorrow International Ministry, was robbed by three armed and masked men during a service on July the 24th. The heist caught on a live stream video. The robbers relieved Bishop Whitehead and his wife of many chains, rings, watches, and other jewelry, the total value of which is in dispute, but is estimated to be as high as a million dollars. Where is he getting his money from? Is this where the church's money is going? Bishop Whitehead Rose, the quote, the devil didn't want me back in this in this pulpit, he said solemnly. God said, you can't take this, take his life. You can touch his material things, but you can't touch his soul. Then he reenacted the robbery twice. Look at this. Come on, people. Would you sit under this type of filth? This is supposedly a man of God laying here on the floor, dr drenched in Gucci. Would you sit under this and he's rolling around on the floor and acting a robbery? Come on. An alleged, an alleged robbery. Now, I'm going to post this article. You can read it for yourself. I'm not going to waste my time uh, on this man. Not a whole lot of time. Mm -mm. 
But you can read you can read it on your own. Look how he dresses. You can read this article on your own. Um, but look at this, a series of frauds. In Brooklyn, Bishop Whitehead's roots run deep. In 1978, police officers stopped a motorist for having a suspended license. He protested. A table of fruit was overturned. And, and as more officers arrived, a big man with a gun on his hip approached. His name was Arthur Miller, the driver's brother and respected businessman in the neighborhood. Mr. Miller had been trying to defuse the situation, but the officers zeroed in on the gun, legally owned and licensed. One put Mr. Miller on a, in a chokehold. He collapsed, according to the news accounts. His legs were off the woods, on and on and on and on and on. Mr. Miller left several children. Because Mr. Miller died, okay, his death led, okay, he died during this uh, situation with the police officer, and his death led to protests and a march in City Hall. Okay, so we know how Mr. Miller died, Lamar Miller's apparently father. So Mr. Miller left several children. The youngest with his mother's last name was a baby, Lamar Miller Whitehead. Growing up as a young man in the main streets of Brooklyn, was not easy, the bishop, the bishop will write on his church's website years later. Being raised in a single parent, a home without a father and expected to survive in a world designed for him to fail in. Okay, so we know that he had a tragic situation, you know, with his father dying, with him being left, being raised by his mother. I don't know if that's what caused him to want to feel like he need to have all this expensive jewelry and expensive clothes. I don't know what it is. But what I do know is something is wrong. In 2005, a woman called Suffolk County Police Department and said someone had bought a bicycle in Brooklyn in her name using all her personal information. A few days later, an officer pulled over a man driving the same motorcycle at a traffic stop. The driver was 27-year-old Lamar Whitey. What followed was a lengthy investigation that uncovered what the police described as a sprawling identity theft and fraud operation set up and run by one person, Mr. Whitey whose girlfriend had access to customers' credit reports through her job at a Long Island car dealership. And people, it goes on and on and on. So this man has a history of fraud. Mm, you've got to read this. This man has a history of fraud. Listen to this. He was convicted of 17 counts, mostly identity theft, and sentenced to 10 to 30 years in prison. Uh, you know, New York, when they <clears throat> sent to someone, they need to keep them in jail. There he is again. This man who's been convicted of fraud. There he is. Look at this Bible. See, the best place to go if you want to defraud people is to the church. Because you have people who are gullible, people who are desperate. Okay? So if you want to defraud people, the church is the place to go. I'm going to post this article. It's, it's in the New York Times. But an update on this man. Turn your, turn your um, volume up. From what I can see, he, he Grabbed a woman by the neck in church. Look at this. This is on TMZ. Jesus, a round of applause. Why they take pictures and they want to be on social media. Take the pictures. 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 He's telling her to press whatever charges she wants. Now, you just saw him grab her by the back of her neck. Amen. Amen. You're not going to come in my space. I feel threatened. Amen. Did you hear him? Amen. He feels threatened. Amen. Amen. Let's get back to the word of God. No, Wrap let's get up. back to the suit that you're wearing. Look, look what he's wearing, guys. He looks like a clown. Look at this. 
you're not going to walk towards my baby after a gun was in her face. Amen? I'm going to protect my baby. Amen? You ain't going to walk to my baby. Amen? You can walk to me. Amen? But you, when you get to my baby and my family, amen, you're going to get out of here. Amen? I'm going to defend my family. Amen? Amen. I have lawsuits out, and, you know, when retaliation is retaliation, that's just what it is. So these gentlemen, and we have proof, these gentlemen sent these two women um, in my church to disrupt my church. Um, and they came in videoing. That's probably what you guys are seeing going viral. Um, they came in videoing, and it was a whole setup. And, you know, I allowed the lady to talk, speak her piece, and curse me out and do whatever she wanted to do. But then when she said, and she, and started to um, throw threats at my wife and started to charge at my wife, that's what you guys saw. My wife had my baby in her hand. Let me pause this for a second. Look at this. Now, this is a man who just recently been robbed of 90000 plus dollars worth of jewelry and look what's around his neck look at this this is an extremely expensive necklace so he's right back no lessons been learned he's right back to win this expensive jewelry and we're not going to have another rendition of my daughter being in harm's way or my wife being in harm's way we're not going to do that so um that's when i took action I grabbed the young lady and escorted her out. And I got the video, y'all. I got the video that y'all don't see. Um, I am a gentleman. I am pro woman. I don't, I don't, I'm not an abusive man. Never been, never will. I believe this is an R. I believe this man is riding in a Rolls Royce. It just gets worse and worse and worse, people. This man is sitting in a Rolls Royce. Would you sit under somebody like this? Um, you know, people that know me, my father died when I was sick, got killed when I was six weeks old. My mom and my grandmother and my older sister raised me. So, you know, I am, um, I am um, very, very um, pro-woman. And, um, but these people were sent into my church to disrupt my church and this lady went towards my wife to attack her and my daughter and that's when I grabbed her okay and okay so he's setting up his defense uh tell it to the judge um you saw what you saw I saw what I saw he's given his defense he has every right to do that in the United States you're innocent until proven guilty and so my advice to you all is stay tuned.